Today, let's talk about people being envious of you as an INFJ. And I don't mean that people actually act in a way of, I wish I was an INFJ, but it seems like people are competing against you. It's like they think you're taking something away from them and they're trying to stop you. They're trying to make you small. They're trying to really hold you back. And so often we don't recognize it as such because it's such a foreign concept to us. So let's really look at it for what it is why people are so often envious of you, what we bring to the table, what people would like to have within themselves, and how we navigate that situation in order to create you know, healthy boundaries for us, to interpret the entire situation in a healthy way that is beneficial for us and for others, and to continuously grow through that process. So before we get started though, I want to remind you that the INFJ Epic Life Bootcamp launches this Saturday, July 20th. So I can't wait to meet so many new faces who are going to join our amazing community of INFJs creating their INFJ Epic Life. We're also going to have a free masterclass here on YouTube, July 20th. Everything you need to know, you can find in the links in the description, and I hope to see many of you there. Emotions like anger, envy, greed, all of them are part of our shadow self and every one of us, you know, carries those things within them. That's, you know, just human behavior. Very often we as INFJs are conscious of it because we know that those aren't emotions that are, you know, a good thing and we try to justify them. We're not only trying to justify them in ourselves, we're maybe trying to change our perspective on them, but we also don't really accept them in other people. And what I mean by this is, let's say you meet somebody and and you have a great rapport, everything seems great, and then out of nowhere, that person tries to compete with you. They try to keep you small. They try to updo you in one way or another. And if you would look at such a situation or such a relationship dynamic, let's say in a movie, it would be very obvious. Okay, so that person is envious and that's why they're reacting this way. But when we look at reality, very often it's hard for us to, you know, interpret it this way because it's just ridiculous. Like who is actually envious of another person? Like, shouldn't you know that this is just, you know, a feeling that has absolutely nothing to do with another person, but there are things in me that I don't want to accept? Well, that is something that we tell ourselves. That is something that because we don't accept those emotions in ourselves, because we know better, we automatically so often assume that, you know, other people do not experience those things either. We can accept them and really name them this way in people that we don't like. But if there's some kind of positive you know, emotion with another person, we somehow identify with them. And if you see some of this behavior, our first thought is, oh, you know, why is this person suffering so much? Why are they thinking I'm taking something away from them? So this entire story starts in our head and we start justifying it. What we have to understand though is that those emotions are part of the human experience. And just because we have really, really high standards on ourselves and sometimes too high standards when it comes to our moral compass, that doesn't mean that other people, you know, are first off aware of those emotions, are aware that this is actually a sign of them being envious or, you know, them experiencing greed or whatever it may be. So first off, that is conscious to begin with. And second of all, they don't have these high expectations of themselves. And so what is the conclusion to that? Well, first off, we have to understand why people could be envious of us. And the main reason for this is because there's something that we have that they don't. And most of the time, it's the fact that we are allowing ourselves to live by our own rules. A lot of people don't have the luxury of that. And it's not because we have grown up in different circumstances than them, or we have had a different upbringing. Like you can take, let's say siblings. One is an INFJ, another is an ENFJ. You have those people in one household, they experience everything the same way. We are not that attached to something external. It has a lot to do with the fact that, you know, TE, 
So extroverted thinking is our blind spot. It's something that we don't care about. And so this is not the only aspect, but there are a lot of parts in us that are really okay with being different. We don't wanna broadcast it. We don't feel like, oh, people should know that we're so different because, you know, it attracts people who just put you down. Like, I understand that, but a lot of people really don't have it in them to overcome those social expectations that they feel they have to play by. And we have those difficulties as well, but in other areas. And so there's always this bias of we see the world the way we are. So we have to understand that there's always a part that is just going to be a blind spot to us. And it's not just as simple as saying, oh, it's extroverted thinking. It's just that no matter how much we think we can understand another person, we will never ever really experience it through their lens. And so with time, we learn to project less and less to understand that our experience is really our experience and that people are experiencing life completely differently. And, you know, we have the expectation that, of course, we know that. But hopefully with every single year that we're on this planet, we understand more and more what is our experience, what is their experience. So one of the things that has really helped me and is something that I personally understood probably you know, maybe in the last five to 10 years, um, is the fact that if people are envious of you, it's because we as INFJs are allowing ourselves to play by the rhythm of our own drums. And it's not something that comes as easily to others as it comes to us. Because for us, it's like, yeah, it's super uncomfortable. It's very isolating because people won't be able to connect with us. There will be people who reject us, like all of this, but it is still something that we theoretically could choose, this level of authenticity in our way. So I'm not saying another type could not be that authentic version of themselves, but our kind of authenticity, the INFJ kind of authenticity is obviously different. So let's say an ISFP is authentically themselves. This is probably not going to be as obvious as an INFJ really being authentically themselves. It's just not as different. It's not as unique. And so this triggers people very often. They might not be aware of it in other people. And it is not in our best interest to deny feelings like greed, envy, anger, whatever it may be, for whatever they actually are in another person. It's not necessary to justify those emotions in order to still think of that person as a good person it's okay to have those emotions. We are not denying them. No human is this ideal. For the longest time, I had huge difficulty with feeling anger. So I always justified what people were doing so I don't really allow my anger to happen because anger is such a superficial emotion, right? Like it's so easy, it's so like childish. It's not like what's really going on that kind of thing, but it's a human emotion. It's part of our experience. Same thing is with selfishness. Same thing is with, you know, wanting some things for yourself. There's always parts of us that aren't perfect, but that are necessary for us to have like the full range of human emotions. And sometimes we have to allow ourselves to feel certain things in order to really be our whole self. And in order to really accept those feelings in others for what they are, we have to accept them in ourselves. So if you see somebody who's envious of you and it's obvious and you just don't know why they're doing it and what's going on and I haven't done anything, maybe they interpreted me the wrong way, just know that there is a big possibility that they are envious of you being able to be authentically you. And every single time you dare to show more of your authenticity, to show more of, you know, your level of emotional intimacy, which is a big part of our authenticity that we can create that, they get triggered and there's some kind of negative reaction. Just see it for what it is. It doesn't make the other person a bad person. Nobody's perfect. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that you are supposed to be the recipient of that emotion. A person has to deal with the fact that they are envious of you 
for living authentically. And every single time they express that anger towards you, every single time they express that envy towards you in an exaggerated way, in a way where they don't allow you to be authentic, you know, just know that it's your responsibility, not just towards that other person, but mainly to yourself to say, I'm not your emotional garbage bag. That means you have to make that person feel this is not something that you're going to accept. How do you do that? Well, first off, you are becoming a mirror. They want to be envious of you. You're not going to allow their emotional state to be something that, you know, impacts you. How do you do that? Well, first off, you tell them to stop through your emotions. So you don't think of yourself as this like highly evolved version that is above that. We're still human. If somebody is having those emotions towards us and they're putting that negative emotion towards us, it will have an effect on us. We're human, right? It will make us feel bad. We can justify it, but it's still an emotional state that we absorb. So we're going to have a reaction. That person acts like this. We put up a block. We let them know this is not how you talk to me and we don't flinch. If that person changes their behavior, great. Okay, we can have a relationship then. This could be your coworker. This could be your neighbor. This could be a friend. This could be a potential romantic interest. Doesn't matter. If they change their behavior, it's okay. And that behavior change can sometimes take years, but it can still happen. But what we're not going to do is first off, continuously pretend like it's not happening. I've done that. It's not healthy. It's not good. Like, please tell me in the comments if you had a situation like this that ever ended well, because I don't know of any, and I've talked to a lot of INFJs throughout the last 10 years. So if that person is somebody who continuously acts this way, of course, it's something that they have to go through, but it's not the right approach to pretend like it's not happening or to continuously go, I can take your pain. Why are you suffering so much? But to actually say, okay, deal with it yourself. This is something that as long as you don't address it, as you don't feel your own emotions and you put them out on me because you can't deal with them, they're never going to heal, right? And it's on them to decide if they want to heal. We're really powerless when it comes to are people going to actually heal. But what we can do is to put those emotions back and say, you can't project them on me. I'm not going to play that role that allows you to put those emotions onto me. Deal with them yourself. No matter how much empathy I have for you, no matter how much love I have for you, this is not my stuff. And I'm not going to take it on because particularly if that is a person that I value and I want them to be happy and flourish in life, it's not going to happen unless they address this thing within them. And then it's on them to decide, do I want to heal? Do I want to see the truth? Or do I want to continue pretending that it's everybody else's fault that I'm feeling this way? It's everybody's prerogative to decide, is this my time to deal with this? Do I have the strength to deal with this? It is not something that we can control, but we can promote it. And we promote it through saying, I'm not going to justify it. This is obvious envy towards me, and I'm not going to allow this energy towards me. If you feel envious, I forgive you. Like, you know, human emotions are okay, but deal with them. Find a way to deal with the fact that you are not allowing yourself to be authentic. Maybe if you deal with it, you will find a new sense of normal that allows you to be authentic as well. But as long as I allow you to project all your negative emotions on me, it's never going to happen. And on top of that, I'm going to be continuously depleted. I'm going to continuously take on responsibility that is not on me. And it's not going to bring anybody anything. That person might be attached to you because you're the only one that allows them to feel those emotions, but it's still not going to help both of you to elevate. So remember, if you experience somebody who seems like they're envious of you, who seems to have some kind of negative emotions that would fall on the shadow side, think of it as if you would see it in a movie where it would be obvious to you, yeah, that person is envious. You don't have to justify it. You don't have to go all deep into, you know, the unconscious behavior and why they're acting this way and so on. Because at the end of the day, it's a negative emotion put onto you and it's not our stuff. So why should we take it on? 
it's not helping you and it's definitely not helping the other person. So let envy be envy, accept it, and be an example of how to do it in a better way. Remember, if you want to join our amazing community of INFJs creating their INFJ Epic Life, then join our next round of the INFJ Epic Life Bootcamp. We launch this Saturday, July 20th. We're going to have a free masterclass that day. Everything else you might want to know, you can find in links in the description. And if you want to watch another video now that is in alignment with today's topic, then check out the video you see on the screen right now. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.